Today, most students prefer a specialization over regular CSE. But with so many options out there, how does one choose the right specialization? Does choosing a BTEC in DS and AI and pursuing a career in data science assure better placements than regular computer science? Stay tuned till the end of the video where we'll explore the differences between BTEC in DS and AI and regular computer science. We will explore the differences in the curriculum. We will also check what the recruiters expect from students and will that help you in better placements. What exactly is BTEC in data science and artificial intelligence. The BTEC in DS and AI focuses on two main areas as the name goes, data science and artificial intelligence. AI is when machines think and learn like humans. For example, chat GPT can almost chat like a real person. Hello sir, how are you doing? Ah uh, sir, somehow managing only <laughs> this traffic and all full headache you know. But what to do sir, this is life. <laughs> In movies, AI is used to create realistic digital version of actors. Data science is about analyzing large amounts of data and find useful information. For example, PhonePay and Paytm analyze transactions to help you send money quickly and securely. Now let's hear from Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella about the importance of data. But the thing that I perhaps want to talk most about today is data. The core intellectual property of any business going forward, the core currency of any business going forward, is their data. The way to take advantage of it, of course, is to convert it into intelligence and more importantly, intelligent action. You want to be able to find out what just happened, why it happened. You want to be able to predict things that may happen. And you want to get to automatically doing things because of your prediction. Data science is not just important for business. It plays a significant role also in healthcare. Let's hear from an expert. I'm Paul Boutros. I'm a cancer data scientist here at the UCLA Johnson Comprehensive Cancer Center. The goal of our research is to figure out how to use large data sets that are now being collected in routine patient care to improve the way that we treat cancer patients. One of the major projects we're looking at right now is how does a cancer differ if it arises in a man or in a woman? And we've been mining thousands of cancer genomes analyzed by groups around the world and using that to discover the subtle differences in how cancer grows depending on who it grows in. Apart from healthcare, it is even used by the government to manage systems like Aadhaar and UPI, where the data of over a billion citizens is stored and analyzed to provide services efficiently. Here, data science helps manage and process this huge amount of information to ensure that everyone gets access to services like subsidies, banking, and public distribution systems. Now for a fair analysis, we have taken the BTEC DS and AI curriculum from one of India's top institutes, the IITs. Here we will check the curriculum and see if it provides you the right skills. And we'll also see what you will really learn over the next four years. In the first year, you won't touch anything remotely related to artificial intelligence or data science. Instead, you will focus on improving your natural intelligence and the science behind it. Yes, you will have chemistry where you will learn about the hydrogen atom, valence bond and molecular orbital theories, RNS and ENZ nomenclature, the structure of a cyclohexane and its derivatives, pericyclic reactions and bio-organic chemistry covering proteins, enzymes, carbohydrates, nucleic acids and lipids. Additionally, you will also have an introduction to biology where you will explore the evolution of life, Darwin's theories, genetic engineering, cloning, and how the human body works, including sense organs like hearing, taste, smell, and vision. And if you say, I haven't even taken biology in 12th, so I can skip it, well, you can't. Apart from this, you will dive into mathematics, basic electronics and physics, covering subjects like Lagrangian mechanics, quantum mechanics, and the special theory of relativity. You will also have lab hours where you will become a superhero in handling fluids, electricity, magnetism, and in the second year though, you will finally get to the core subjects of data science and AI. You will learn programming in R, data collection and machine learning workflows. You will also study algorithms, discrete maths and data structures, essential skills for managing large amounts of information. In addition, you will be introduced to AI covering the basics and theories behind artificial intelligence. You also have a course on statistical foundations for data science, where you will dive into topics like multi-dimensional random variables, joint, marginal and conditional distributions, conditional expectations, independence, covariance, correlation, standard multivariate distributions, functions of multi-dimensional random variables, forms of convergence, the law of large numbers and the central limit theorem. A great man once said there are two types of people in the world. Those who love maths and those who think that pi is something to eat. If you belong to the latter, then data science is not for you. So remember, you can't escape maths and these are 
essential for your workplace too. Let's hear from Amy, who is a recruiter at Microsoft. Data scientists at Microsoft use machine learning, statistics, experiments, and more to build and improve great products while making business impact. You will collaborate across the company, formulate approaches to solve problems, and use algorithms and data sources in the context of business and engineering needs. Apart from maths, you will learn Python programming, a crucial language widely used in data science and AI. In your third year, you will explore advanced topics like machine learning, deep learning, and big data analytics, where you will learn about the basics of big data and why it matters. You will also study the Internet of Things. Additionally, you will have data visualization, which helps you present insights clearly. And you will also have the subject privacy and information security, where you will learn about vulnerabilities, risk management, worms, viruses, malware, and antivirus tools. In your final year, you will specialize in fields like bioinformatics, focusing on gene sequencing and molecular biology. You will also delve into data analytics for finance, covering topics such as portfolio management and financial risk analysis. Additionally, the final year offers elective courses, allowing you to select subjects that interest you, such as recommendation system design, similar to what platforms like Netflix Use. That sounds really comprehensive. But does this prepare you for better placements? Top tech companies like Microsoft and Google offer lucrative salaries for data scientists, but what do they look for in a candidate for such roles? Let's hear from an expert. Do you have any topics and areas students should focus on while they prepare to interview with Microsoft? Absolutely. Across Microsoft, our university data science interviews focuses on four main components. Technical excellence, collaboration, drive for results, and adaptability. When preparing for a technical piece of the interviews, be ready to answer questions related to machine learning fundamentals, algorithm design, understanding and interpreting the data, coding, as well as linear algebra, statistics, and probability. If you have in-depth technical knowledge and or are publications in a specific domain or focus area, such as natural language processing or deep learning, be ready to answer deep technical questions associated with those domains. During the portion of the interview that focuses on collaboration, we are looking for examples on how you effectively work with others to solve problems and build solutions. All teams at Microsoft thrive on collaboration. It is a big part of our work environment. For the Drive for Results segment, we are looking for experiences and skills showing how you implement effective end-to-end -end problem solving while driving to positive outcomes. This is where explaining your thought process and asking clarifying questions is essentially important. Lastly, adaptability relates to the way in which you respond to changes in the scenario or questions being asked and how you can work under ambiguous situations. So, it is clear that just having technical skills like coding and knowing theory isn't sufficient. You will have to demonstrate that you can communicate, collaborate, solve problems and be adaptable. In fact, solving real-world problems actually make you better at communication, collaboration, adaptability and also make you better at coding. But does the BTEC in DS and AI provide these? Did we miss something? Let's take a closer look. The curriculum outlines LTPC meaning lecture, tutorial, practical and credits, which show the weekly hours allocated for each subject. When we analyze the four years, 132 out of the 203 hours, about 65% are dedicated to the core DS and AI syllabus. While this is great, most of it consists of classroom lectures and the curriculum provides only 55 hours for essential practicals related to DSNAI which are just 27%. We also saw that to be a successful practitioner you need higher order thinking skills right? like critical thinking, problem solving, being a good communicator. How does the program fare on these? Let's see. If we check the hours in the curriculum again, only 12 out of 203 hours, which is around 5%, are reserved for humanities electives, where students can choose subjects like comparative drama or introduction to phonetics. They also learn about language mechanics such as aphasia, grammatism, neurolinguistics, language and society, registers, standardization, etc. While these are very interesting, I'm not sure they're relevant in providing the skills that these top tech companies see. And the remaining 56 hours out of 203, around 27% are not even related to the core DSNA. So overall, it's a brilliant comprehensive curriculum, but you would be missing out on some of these higher order thinking skills and hands-on experience. So if four years of your classroom in BTEC doesn't provide you hands-on experience and solving real-world problems, where can you acquire these skills? 
one effective way is to get an internship. Government organizations like UIDAI and UPI offer internships to BTEC students, providing a fantastic opportunity to learn and gain practical experience. Websites like Kaggle allow you to explore real data sets, such as the UPI transactions, Marvel vs DC fan following, and detailed information on asteroids and comets approaching Earth. You can use these data sets to practice your skills like data visualization, applying AI and ML algorithms, or even practicing your coding skills. You can also sign up for competitions which help you solve real-world problems along with your team and win prizes and medals. Now let's hear from Pramod Verma who played a key role in building Aadhaar on what his thoughts are about this. And we, India must take time to actually solve dataset problems. We must put out good curated, not only language dataset, health dataset, uh, agri data set and so on and give it to all of you guys so that you can train your agri model, drone model, whatever health tech models instead of you begging and pleading for some health data with some one hospital or two hospital. Okay, you chose BTEC in DS and AI at a top university in India. You've learned all these skills and you're all set for placements in a data science role. But are you missing something by not choosing regular BTEC CSE? Let's explore that. So let's look at the BTEC regular CSE curriculum at the same college right now. The first year is quite similar to DS and AI. In the second year though, you will learn digital design, system software, Unix commands and basic Linux administration. You'll also study computer architecture and organization along with hardware labs. In the third year, you will take software engineering and a software engineering lab. In the final year, you can choose electives like speech processing and mobile robotics. However, the practical hours are still limited and you won't be solving real-world problems. So, even if you choose regular BTEC CSE, you will have to put in extra effort outside college hours to gain these skills to help you in placements. But hey, is there a way where you can gain all these technical skills, improve your communication, engage in practical learning and solve real-world problems all within college hours? Yes, and it's the Calvium BTEC program. Calvium BTEC program is available across top universities and here students learn the skills more practically, solve real-world problems and get guidance to participate in challenges.